Triangle Fire is a one-act opera of a little over an hour about events that actually happen. In fact, everything in this opera, every event, every character is real, not fictitious, except one. The journalist who brings us up to date at the end, Sarah Shepard Ashton, great granddaughter of the actual reporter and witness, William John Shepard, is an invention of the libretto. The sources of the libretto have been three books and an HBO documentary film, which include the New York City Triangle Fire, which accompanies the film, Triangle, The Fire That Changed America by David Contrera, and the centennial edition of The Triangle Fire by Leon Stein with a forward by Michael Hirsch. The HBO film, directed by Daphne Peterson, <coughs> who was going to try to make it today, but I don't think it um, features scholars and relatives of victims and survivors of the fire many of whom we also interviewed, largely thanks to the help of Professor Lee Bennett, who is here today, and will be participating with me in a Q&A after the opera for as much time as we have. Of course, my librettist, Ellen Franco, used the 2,000-page transcript of the trial of the owners who were acquitted despite the protests of hundreds of thousands of people. This is my 11th opera and my first collaboration with Ellen, who proposed the collaboration with me, and has been a terrific researcher and diligent creator of 293 slide projections to enhance the performance on a projector loaned to us by Barbara D'Andrea, which this month is being run by Tom Bias. <laughs> yes, he deserves the applause. <laughs> Since this is a particularly adroit audience with a few, quite a few musicians here, including uh, a critic for a publication I've written for a great deal, the New Music Concert, I think I'll say a bit about the musical structure of the piece that you're about to hear. As many of you know, I've translated a number of operas from the Russian with the help and encouragement of my late mother, Emily Carl Ehrman, and found inspiration in the way characters are built in them musically, especially in works like Dagomirsky, Mussorgsky, and Stravinsky. Often in their operas, as in mine, a particular role will be associated with a characteristic time signature. In The Birthday of the Bank, which I based on Chekhov Jubilee, the dreamy bank director sings and dances in waltz time. His clerk is in a stolid 4-4, his scatterbrained wife in septuple meter, and a crazy old lady who disrupts everything in, is in quintuple time. In this opera, a daze caused by the fire is reflected right from the beginning in a fast waltz. The reporter, quasi ringmaster, has a jaunty, almost ragtime air. The smooth defense attorney puts his points across in a perpetual motion 6-8, similar to the clatter of the factory machine. While the prosecutor here has an uphill battle waged in a fight against symmetry in 5-4, 5-8, and 15-8 time, and the judge is more square. These meters conflict with each other as the characters do. There's also a reference to a song from a contemporaneous operetta that the seamstresses actually did sing as they tried to keep calm while escaping from the burning building. And an invented operetta waltz called Chardash in which the factory owners express their joy in selling their product, the modern shoes. There's also a certain amount of cunning, with every mention of the eighth, ninth, or tenth floor reflected in the corresponding interval. And the word triangle is set with an augmented triad composed of thirds trisecting the octave. The chorus has the final word in a modal tonality that I hope will resonate the way some of Hans Eisler's and Mark Blitzstein's 1930s settings inspired by Brecht still resonate for those seeking a united front against the Russians. 